right, I had one more test I wanted to do. I pulled this tappet cover off the side, marked all of these tappets, wanted to make sure they were all spinning. Long story short, that's not the cause of our noise. We're definitely up here in the head. Another part of my diagnosis this morning, I've already had this manifold off once. I was able to look in at the exhaust valve seat inserts and with everything cold, I couldn't see where anything had been moving at all. But this acts up mostly when it's hot. So I only threw just a couple of bolts back on so that we can pull this manifold back off in a hurry and hopefully get a look at something while it's still retaining some heat. Okay, valve is full open. I can see the seat. You're probably not going to see it on camera as well as I can see it with my eye. That seat is still in place though. Now I've rolled the engine so that the intake valve on our suspect number three cylinder is open. I can see the seat with this mirror and flashlight and I'm, I'm putting pressure on it right now with this hook tool. For the intakes, you, you kind of have to go around a corner. Nothing is loose, nothing moves. Nothing has dropped down that I've been able to see. So even with pulling the manifold off as quickly as I could to retain as much engine heat as I could, still nothing presents itself. I did do a compression test. All four cylinders have the same amount of squeeze, but if it is indeed a valve seat insert that's loosening up, it's not falling out. I would say it would just be dropping a little bit and then the valve smacks it tight back up against the shoulder again. So in that case, it wouldn't create enough cylinder leakage to have a noticeable drop in compression anyhow. And uh, once again, marking those tappets really helped. You could watch those things spin around. While the noise was present, I tried stopping them. I tried just making any kind of a change at all down here. Had no effect. Probed around with the stethoscope one more time. Down here, we're quiet. Right here, we're quiet. Up here, particularly in this area, we're especially loud. So I think pulling the cylinder head is next. Um, a lot of people suggested try to throw a bore scope in through the spark plug holes. The trouble with this engine, with the valves being on the other side and being so recessed up inside those uh, combustion chambers, you're not gonna be able to do a 90 and have a look up at them anyway. So that really wouldn't be an option either. So we've put it off for long enough. Let's just take it back apart. You'll have to pardon the buzzing in the background. I decided to turn the air conditioner on in here today. Makes it a little nicer to work. Who put this together anyway? These gaskets certainly we're not going to leak. Well, everybody, I found the problem, <laughs> but y'all ain't gonna believe this. We start with the cylinder head, pulled both the valves, really scrutinized those seats. There is nothing wrong with either of those inserts. They show no indication of ever having moved. We have excellent valve stem to guide clearance on both of them. We have very good valve face contact around both. Um, Really no problems in the area that I was most suspect at all. 
So rather stumped, we move over to the engine and we really start scrutinizing cylinder number three. That's the area where we had most of the noise. Um, remember now, I did a full rebuild on this about 18 years ago now. It's only really put in about 250 service hours in that time. I realize over time, anything can happen, but the condition of everything here should be all right. Still, I was going to start looking at like cylinder wall, uh, checking the clearance of the piston inside the sleeve. So I rolled the engine to get the piston up top and this happened. Hmm. And being rather alarmed, I rolled it back and I heard a suspiciously familiar click slash knock sound. I immediately go to the head gasket to see if there are any witness marks but there are none. I then go to the cylinder head to see if there are any marks from that sleeve popping up and hitting it. And again, nothing. So I go back to the head gasket again because this should not allow that sleeve to lift up and down. It should overlap the top of that just a bit. So we go and set it on there once again. And sure enough, look at that, it extends well beyond the perimeter of the top lip of that sleeve. Well, about this time, I'm starting to think that I'm onto it. So luckily I had the old head gasket from the prior rebuild that I did. This was a good Felpro one. I just like the construction of it so much better than that new one that came from that Steiner kit. But um, do a quick overlay of this. And look at that, sure enough, it covers close to half of the top lip of that sleeve. That is how it's supposed to be. That new head gasket was not doing its job. So we've got no part number on this new gasket, no manufacturer ID. And just for kicks, I broke into the partial Felpro kits that I picked up with those NOS Farmall H parts at the Lissor swap meet this spring. Uh, this one here is what I consolidated out of three previously opened kits. It does have a good head gasket in. This one has not been opened at all, so it's still fully intact. But I wanted to see, now that we have some you know known good spec parts here, how these compare to the old head gasket that had the rings in the correct places. And sure enough, do the overlay test. Everything is tight and right, just how it should be with these Felpros. So at least we've got some working stock to pull from. And people would ask, why would you buy partial gasket sets that have already been opened? Uh, known good brand, known quality, known good spec. And that segues perfectly into our next dilemma. What do we do about the sleeve that's been popping up and down? They should not want to move in the block bore that easily, but these are minimal wear components. Like I said, 200, 50-ish hours since I put them in. You still see crosshatch on the cylinder wall, but I guess to start, I'll jack it up, I'll clean that counter bore, clean under the lip, set it back down, check protrusion, uh, really scrutinize for cracking, deformation. If I see anything obvious, then it's time for sleeves and pistons. Just renew it. If I don't see anything obvious. See, the trouble is these pieces were bought long enough ago that they were all known quality, like Hastings and Clevite brand stuff none of what's available today is of a known quality at all most of it's that same no-name stuff that have no identifiers you don't know where it came from you don't know how it's going to perform it's very possible the new pieces could be worse than what we've got right there even though they're now <laughs> less than desirable what would you all do you we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place um everything good that we used to enjoy Paint, OEM, spec quality parts, all that stuff's going away. So you make do with the best of what you have. And I'm tempted just to throw a known good head gasket back on top of that. If, if it all seems to check out, put the head back on, run it, see if it gives us any problems. But like I said, post up below. Which direction would you go with this? At any rate, whatever we do, whatever we find, I hope to see you all back for that. I thank you, each and every one of you, for watching. We'll find out next time, I guess.